Hill, Italy, one of New York's most iconic neighborhoods, yet some label it a tourist trap. Today, we'll explore with a native Italian to get her perspective and see if there's any magic left on Mulberry Street. You don't want to miss it. You've lived in the city a few years. What are your thoughts on Little Italy? Well, I think it's very touristy. You can see it, but I think that if you know where to look, there are some really cool, authentic Italian spots. That is the goal today. One thing many tourists are used to here is people trying to pull you into the restaurants. Come here, come here. You know, that happens in Italy too sometimes, especially in the touristy spots. Yeah. You can find that. Cafe Napoli. This is the restaurant that I always send my viewers to if they say they're going to be eating in Little Italy. I am really curious to see your opinion. Look, they even have Aqua panna, which is as Italian as it gets. We're gonna do bruschetta napoletana. Bruschetta napoletana. And fettuccine alfredo. Fettuccine alfredo, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, let's add a, a spaghetti and meatballs as well. Spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, how authentic does it look to you? Um, pretty authentic, I would say. Yeah. Ready? All right, let's try it. Ready. <laughs> she managed to take a perfect bite, mine. <laughs> it's an art you learn with experience. But I've ordered this year before, fantastic. It's nice and garlicky, I like it. Mm. In America, they tend to use a lot of garlic, garlic flavor, which for a bruschetta is perfect. Thank you. I've always wanted to know, is, is that American or Italian, this whole grated cheese at your table? No, it's Italian, but usually you do it yourself. There is a little container. Uh, we intentionally order the most Americanized Italian food you could get in Little Italy. Spaghetti and meatballs. I don't know if it gets more American than that. Maybe this is more American. Fettuccine Alfredo. What do you think of this? We are there. I think they, they are even. Literally in Italy, you can't, you can't find this on any menu. No, no. It's, it's not an Italian thing. And I find it very funny that they call this plate with an <laughs> Italian name of a person, Alfredo, you know? <laughs> you could find it, potentially, in some restaurants. If you find it, it means that you are in a very touristy restaurant and they receive so many Americans that are asking for fettuccine Alfredo that they add the item to the menu for the American tourists. Mm. Mm. My meatball, tasty, good flavor. What about you? I like it so much. This is not an item on a menu in Italy, but it's something that an Italian would make at home when he doesn't want to cook. Feeling so, lazy, okay. Yeah, when you feel lazy, you don't want to cook a proper sauce for your pasta, you're just gonna throw in some butter, parmigiano-reggiano cheese, and some cream, which I feel is exactly what this is. A little bit of pepper, that's it. Do you, do you think it is possible to find decent food in Little Italy? if you know where to look. You know, I'm actually very surprised, I have to say. The food here tastes quite legit. You know, the fettuccine so far are really delicious. They are cooked al dente, which Americans know what it means, right? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. They're perfectly cooked. They're nice and chewy. I'm not gonna name names, but there's a lot of tourist trap restaurants, which I wouldn't tell you to go to, but this is not one of them. Lou, the owner, he uses his grandma's recipes. He, he's legit, as you said, good word. You can't go wrong here. They have a huge location. You can do outdoor dining. Uh, this is always my go-to, is why I took you here. Did you put chicken in there? It was just, just fettuccine. Why, do you usually put chicken in there? I think that's normally the thing, chicken fettuccine Alfredo. Americans are just obsessed with chicken. They put it everywhere, <laughs> both on top of pizza, Never seeing anything like that in Italy. And also in pasta, we don't combine these two things. I mean, chicken is second course, it's just... Then I take you're not a fan of chicken parm. No, I'm not. Cafe Palermo, AKA the Cannoli King. You've been here before? Yeah, once, actually. Do you like cannolis? Yes, who doesn't like cannolis? Who doesn't like cannolis, especially in New York. I just want to get three cannolis to go. Kind of mini for well, th three minis. <laughs> <laughs> Was it too, is that too much sugar for you? No, it's just that there's. I don't want to get cream all over my the back of my head. Never had a bad experience at a cafe Palermo here. All right, let's try it. So crunchy and creamy in the inside. Crunchy, creamy, sweet. Mm. You know, one bite, everybody knows the rules. I can do two. Wait, what's the rule? You don't watch Barstool Sports? And I'm gonna be honest again, I've never had cannoli in Italy. So this is the closest you've come? Yeah. Okay. 
I've had them here for a few times. Yeah. I feel like they are way more popular in New York than in Italy. I'm wondering, what are these letters above Mulberry Street? Ha, nel blu, dipinto di blu, felice. One of the most famous Italian songs of all times, probably. It's a song made uh, probably in the 60s. It's called Volare. And then when you started singing it, I'm like, maybe I've heard it in a commercial before, I think. How you nice to meet you. You have right, been in just... our bedroom for the last two months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> I'll tell my <laughs> wife that. Si, lavoro Firenze per due anni. Si, sono ingegnero spaziale. Lavoro per nuova opinione. Oh mio dio. <laughs> First Italian she's uh, Italian she's heard here all day. <laughs> Seriously. We have got behind me one of the most famous stores in Little Italy, Aleva or as you would say Aleva, the oldest cheese shop in the United States, opened in 1892. You ready for this closing next month? We've got to go before it closes and you told me you love shops like this, right? Yeah, absolutely. These are everywhere in Italy. These are the little town shop that you go to to get your groceries every couple of days. What do you make in store? Uh, fresh mozzarella gets made every day. Mmm. Pom! <laughs> it's so sharp. How Italian is this? I'm so happy about this. This is pretty Italian. Oh, you wow. want to dip it or are you just going to take a bite? Uh, no Italian would dip this into a tomato sauce. <laughs> Every American would dip this into marinara sauce. <laughs> Closing March 5th, but they're looking for a new spot. So if you like what you see, you come after March 5th, Google it, look up their Instagram, whatever, find them. Instead of buying one of those cheesy t-shirts, come to a store like this and buy some real Italian cookies oh, yeah. as your souvenir. Oldest Italian gift store in Little Italy, oh. E. Rossi and Company, since 1910. This place, legendary, and I've heard, in danger of closing. It smells like an old bookstore. Only legit, real, authentic places have this smell. That's what I think. A mousetrap? <laughs> this is to foam your milk to make a cappuccino oh. at home. But this is so old school. This was probably from the 90s. Look what they have. La Settimana Enigmistica. Any good Italian knows this. It's the same one since the 60s, I think. We started in 1910. My grandfather, Ernesto Rossi, came, uh, came from Italy in 1900 from publishing music. Then they got involved in selling uh, other articles, uh, houseware products, old fashioned. Neapolitan style coffee makers, also selling religious articles. You know, how important do you feel like a business like this is to the community? You need small businesses like this. <laughs> I mean, not every corner could have a drugstore or a Starbucks or a McDonald's. And I think all the ethnic neighborhoods should be helped by the city and should be preserved. So as a child, my mother would speak to me in broken English and in the dialect from Naples. Here in Little Italy, Mulberry Street was mostly from Naples, spoke Neapolitan. Two blocks over, you go to Elizabeth Street, they spoke heavy Sicilian dialect. A lot of them were from Shaka. A lot of uh, a lot of people I know, their grandchildren and so on, want to move back here, but it's too expensive for them to move Don't back Don't get me here. started, it is. It's extremely expensive. You've been gone for such a long, long time, and I can still hear you calling calling out my name. All right, Ernie said if you come in here and just say hello and that you saw this on Here Be Bar, he'll give you this little postcard for free. And that's Mulberry Street, 1900. I totally agree with Ernie when he says these shops are the heart and soul of New York City and I see them disappearing more and more, so that's very sad. I think we should all support places like this one. Support Ernie, come here and shop. There are still authentic places, which I wasn't really expecting much because Little Italy is known for being very touristy, so amazing. You just I have to know where to look. You just have to know yes, where to look. Exactly. If you like Little Italy and you want to complete your afternoon, head to Soho next. In this video, we show you exactly what to do.